Trent McConaughey is with me uh, from Big Chain DB. Uh, your goal is uh, to make a blockchain database for the world. Yes. <laughs> That's ambitious, or not? Uh, the internet was ambitious. The internet exists, right? Um, and we want to help upgrade the internet um, with the technology that we can provide, and Big Chain DB can be a piece of that, right? Uh, we also see, though, that it's not just about a public database for the planet. This sort of technology can be highly useful within enterprises, for financial, for banking, etc., where privacy does matter and, and close. So you can roll the software, Big Chain DB software, um, however you like, in whatever federation. What, what, what would be the advantage of, of having a worldwide database for blockchain? Yeah, so um, after we released Big Chain DB, and even before, um, you know, we've been in the field for since before it was a field called blockchain for several years and we've you know identified a lot of different applications um, and you can kind of group them into about five applications areas identity intellectual property financial energy and supply chain so among these um, the first two identity and intellectual property are much more things that need public angles very strong public angles intellectual property you have the cultural commons you know you really want to make sure that the world's art and artifacts um, can be accessible to people uh, broadly. And that, therefore, sort of by definition, you need a public database. Identity as well, um, this is something where multiple people could plug in in various ways. Of course, you need privacy controls here and there in the right places. But it's something where um, it's best as a global public database as opposed to one database controlled by some very tight, small set of organizations, mm -hmm. um, especially ones that care about dollars. So those are the two main applications, identity and intellectual property, that really fit um, the public database the best. A lot of supply chain applications fit there as well, um, but less so for things like the financial applications. Okay, but uh, yeah, I understand. Yeah, mm -hmm. But the world is organizing countries, mm -hmm. uh, so you have to work around, uh, around that fact. Yeah. Around uh, countries are organized. Mm -hmm. And what you do is you put a worldwide uh, database yeah. Um, so, uh, but how do countries interfere with your idea? Yeah, so um, in general we take the attitude that it's very useful to work within the law and work within the bounds of the law and whenever you can actually to help augment um, the existing systems um, in a way that helps the creators, etc. So for example um, with intellectual property Right now, copyright laws exist, right? Mm -hmm. um, but if I'm a creator and someone rips off my work, how do I prove that it was me? Or if I'm if I go to a court of law with it with evidence, um, uh, you know, what evidence can I provide to help show that it was me? And this is where blockchain technology, timestamping, can help, right? So um, this is an example where we're working with existing copyright laws. Um, rather than trying to say, we need to reinvent IP. Now, IP laws throughout the world have a lot of problems, but we need to build bridges. So we're not, we don't advocate you know, rewriting laws right now for the world, but we do advocate, you know, here's what you can do with technology now, work within the law of the now, and bit by bit by bit, build bridges to the new world. Mm. But you want to stay out of the financial world? No, no, no. So BigChainDB is a piece of software. Uh -huh. um, one of the networks of BigChainDB is IPDB, Interplanetary Database. Mm. It is a network that is a planetary database. It's a public instance of Big Chain DB for the world. But there are many other instances of Big Chain DB that people can roll how they like, right? So, for example, Everledger is rolling one for diamonds, right? With diamond mines and certification houses, etc. And banks and financial institutions in general are rolling various um, instantiations of Big Chain DB for their own purposes, whether it be for exchanges or for remittance or whatever. So it's if you think about databases in general, right, like any big company probably has, you know, 10 or 500 different databases that they roll, right? For, and each one has different purposes. You know, you've got SQL databases, you've got, you know, document stores, all these, graph databases. Well, now, in addition to these existing databases that they have, they can have databases that allow them to work in consortiums, yes. right? It's consortium databases. And that's really what a blockchain database is when approached from the angle of the enterprise. It's a database that allows competitors or companies that are maybe complementary but within an, an ecosystem and allows them to work together sharing data without fully having to trust each other right where are you now in uh, developing this this uh, database yeah so uh, we started work last summer um, quietly and uh, we released the first version of it in Fe in February um, as alpha 
Um, now we've released, um, I think, you know, it was version 0.1. Now it's at version 0.4.1, I believe. Um, it's still alpha, but we are getting closer and closer towards uh, production all the time. So people are downloading it and running it and testing it right now. You know, to do proof, proofs of concept, it's fine. Um, and where we're headed is we're targeting for production versions um, as soon as six months from now. So for people to be running in production. Um, what's very nice is that we built on top of an existing distributed database um, that has been hardened over many, many years. So we didn't have to rewrite everything from scratch. We have a layer on top of this existing distributed database that adds decentralization, decentralized control. Uh, right? who, who are your launching clients? So uh, when we launched in February, the launching client was Everledger, uh, which is diamonds in the blockchain. Uh -huh, there are several uh -huh. other clients that we have made public. So uh, this includes Tangent90, which is basically for um, transparency in the medical supply chain. We're working with um, several consulting firms, um, big ones, small ones. Um, some of those are public, so Capgemini, for example. Um, we publicly announced that we're working with them. There's one or two that I think that we announced last week. Um, there's others too that they tell us that they're using us and we, it makes us very happy so we don't have to announce. So um, Ben Ben, for example, which is a land registry in Ghana, um, they're using us, they publicly announced. Or um, Electron, which is uh, an electricity um, startup out of the UK, um, they publicly announced they're using us. Uh, we're also working with RWE, which is Germany's largest electric utility. Electric utilities fit really well yeah. because of deregulation. So it's the same thing as decentralization. You know, you de you deregulate via decentralization. But why why would R RWE, uh, the energy company, uh, need a worldwide database? So um, remember, their RWE themselves, they're a big big organization, right? They have a whole bunch of different applications, and they with different applications, they've been rolling out prototypes for this. Things like charging electric cars or energy exchange markets, etc. Right. So um, for each of these different applications, it could be a different network, or it could be on this overall global public database that is IPDB. It's their choice, right? And so in some cases, it really makes sense to use the global public database. Things like um, IoT applications where you kind of want to see everything and you want to make it visible to everyone. But there's no need, for example, um, for the whole world to see what, how much electricity every single house has. You know, you don't want to put um, meters from houses public, uh, that's actually very dangerous, right? So um, with all of this, there's always um, deep considerations you need to do that reconcile you know, transparency desires with privacy desires, right? And it really depends on the application. Thank you very much. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Cheers. Bye.